believer without the spirit of faith because it is common to all believers. That I'm convinced that there's nothing no one can say or do to change my mind. There's nothing no one can do to shake my faith because I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure we know that nothing can separate not only me but all of us from the love of God. That I'm persuaded beyond doubt that I am sure and we know that nothing can separate not only me but all of us from the love of God. I know you may be thinking, well, what about sin? And sin does separate us from God but not his love. Well, how can you say this? Because God is love. And just because we don't love God, just because we don't serve God, just because we don't worship God, does not stop God from being who and what he is. And God is love. And sin separates us from fellowship with God. And sin separates us from communion with God. Sin puts a void between us and God sin caused God to turn away from his son. Jesus said while he was hanging on the cross, why hast thou forsaken me? Because Jesus took all our sins upon him. Jesus was never a murderer, but on the cross, he was a murderer. That Jesus was never a thief, but on the cross, he became a thief. Jesus was never a liar, but on the cross, he became a liar. So God had to turn his face away from Jesus. That's why he said, why have thou forsaken me? But you better believe God still loves Jesus. So sin is because of us. And love is because of God. God is anti-sin, but he is not anti-love. That God gave us Jesus because he is anti-sin, but he also gave us Jesus because he is not anti-love. Yeah. The Bible says, God who is rich in mercy. Yes, yes. For his great love wherewith he loved us, that even when we were dead in sin, he quickened us together with Christ. He quickened us or he made us alive together with Christ. It sounds to me that God must have loved us. My brothers and sisters, whether we go to heaven or hell, God's love is everlasting. And God says, I love you with a everlasting love. But if we go to hell, it's because of our hatred for God. If we have been separated from God, it's because of us and not God. But the reason we have a way back is because God's love for us and not our love for God. I'm fully persuaded that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. So I rejoice and I'm exceedingly glad that God has made a commitment to us. I rejoice and I'm exceedingly glad that God has made a commitment to us. God has made a pledge to us. God has made a promise to us. God has vowed to us. He has given us his word. And shouldn't we make a commitment to God? I'm going to ask you again because that was a question I want you to think about. Shouldn't we make a commitment to God? Shouldn't we make a pledge to God? Shouldn't we make a promise to God? Shouldn't we make a vow to God? Shouldn't we give God our word? God has committed himself to his word. But God has also committed himself to love. God says, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. God says, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And wherever we end up, no matter what happens to us, God still loves us. It doesn't matter if we feel the love or not. But when we don't feel 
love or feel that God is near is when God is his closest. Yeah. Yes. And we must put our faith into action. That that faith is believing God just because God said it. And he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And after all we have done to undermine God and his kingdom and you still love me. That we have forsaken the assembly of God. We have turned our back on God and yet God still loves us. Somebody ought to be happy about that. Somebody ought to give God some praise because God still loves you. After all my sin and all my iniquity, after all my lies, after everything I did, after all I did to curse God, I should have died. But God still kept me. God still got me here. He got me here for a reason and it's not to sit down on my praise. So it is a love worth finding. And a love like this is a love worth finding. Yeah. Said I never knew a love like this until I had an understanding of God's unfailing love. Glory. Glory. I never knew a love like this until I had an understanding of God's yeah. boundless and boundless, unlimited and unrelenting love. I'm going to be honest to tell you, I'm overwhelmed in love. I'm overtaken with love. I'm consumed in love. And the best part about it is that the well will never run dry. The good news is that nobody or nothing can separate us from this love. That when nobody else loved me, when nobody else cared, God said, I love you from everlasting to everlasting. God has a never-ending supply of love. God said, I love you because that's who I am. He said, that's just what I do. And in a world with so much hate, we could use some love. Yeah. In a world with so many killings, we, we, we can use some love. In a world where we're going to war with one another, we can use some love. I don't know about you, but I know that I can use some love. And I'm so glad that I can go to God and he don't have an Indian supply. I'm so glad I can go to God and he said, I love you from the time you were born. Don't you judge God. Don't you judge loving God by the way you love your friend. 
friends all the way you love, your family all the way you love, your spouse. God said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Again, I'm fully persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Despite the enemy going to God with all his accusations. And every time you turn around, the enemy is going to God saying, look at what your faithful servant is doing. Look at what your faithful servant is saying. Look at the places that he has found himself, your faithful servant. But God says, I choose to love them and I'm not going to stop. It feels good to know that even though I've been no good, I'm still love you, still love me. I'm going to say that again because I think somebody should have gotten more excited than that. When I think about how no good I've been, when I think about all the times I could have died, when I think about how I never cared about God, I think about when I put God to the side. I said, God said, I choose to love them and I'm not going to stop. It feels so good to know that even though I've been no good, God said, I still love you. You all, Heavenly Father, help me right now. I'm so glad. And 
the manifestation thereof. Yeah. Instead of tribulation or affliction or misfortune or shell of distress, sorrow or misery, shell of persecution, yeah. oppression or torment, say of mistreatment, famine or poverty, say of drought, destitution, nakedness, prayer or sword. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble? But in our affliction, he still loves us. In our sorrows, he still loves us. In our misery, he still loves us. In our persecution, he still loves me. In my oppression, God still loves me. So let's take to all. Have endured all manner of suffering. And yet, we are not separated from the love of God. Yes. Therefore, such suffering cannot separate us yes. now. Yes. He said that all the saints of old and all the tribulations and trials that they went through, Sister Brown, after everything we have gone through from our ancestors to now, that none of us was separated from God. And if we didn't separate them back then, he ain't going to separate us now. So I think that's a reason to shout. I think that's a reason to give God some praise. I think that's a reason to get excited. I think that's a reason to have joy, unspeakable joy. I think that's a reason to wake up with a smile on your face that nothing can separate me from the love of God. My brothers and sisters, the enemy has been trying to separate us from God for over and what I said it wrong. The enemy has been trying to separate us from God, but has failed over and over and over again. And I just want to tell you that he's going to continue to fail because of the all-powerful, conquering love of God. Amen. So yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surprise, a surpassing victory through him that loved us. Yeah. And who was he talking about whenever he said through him that loved us? I think he's talking about the one that hung and died on the cross. I think he hung and he died and he bled, but he got back up and when he got back up he had all power, but it was the same power that helps us to love or doesn't separate us from the love of God right now. Don't tell me that love can't do it. Don't tell me that love isn't the reason that we don't have hatred from God. It's because of love. Don't tell me that love is insignificant. Because love kept me out of hell. Love is keeping you out of hell. And the reason that we have a chance right now is because of love. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. In the presence of trouble, in the presence of fear, yeah. in the yeah. presence of our enemies, we can smile at them and say, do as thy will. But the God, but God is the strength of my heart forever and my portion forever. Yes. Yes. He said you can smile at your enemies, you can smile at trouble and tell it do what it is that you want to do, but I still got the power of God. I still got the love of God. So I believe I'm going to be alright. Yes. And in all things, in the very midst of them, while we are in doing them, we are able to triumph. See, there's triumph in Jesus. There's triumph in the blood. There's triumph in what happened on the cross. And we are the triumphant yes. church not because we attend Mount Triumph Baptist Church, but because of the unfailing and the overwhelming love of Jesus Christ. So we were able to triumph because God's love, because of God's unwavering support, because wherever we may be, the love of God is present. See, God supports his children willingly. Yeah. And God doesn't have any issues supporting his children. Yes. Because he was because he willingly put himself on child support. God doesn't have any issues doing right by his children, even though we don't do right by God. Yes. You know, we have some of these fathers in the world today that won't take care of children that they made. But God said, I made you, I created you, I'm yeah. gonna take care of you. I'm going to be there for you no matter what you do, no matter how you act, no matter how you behave, I still love you and I will be there 
to the end of times. And I said it earlier, and I'm going to say it again. If we end up in hell, that's because of us. So my brothers and sisters, I am persuaded that neither death shall hurt us. For Christ has died. Nor life, for he rose again. Nor angels, nor principality, nor things present, nor things to come, because Christ is at the right hand of God. No power, no height, no depth, no any other creature, for Christ makes intercession for us. Yeah. And nothing shall have the power to separate us from this love. Yeah. The love of Christ is stronger than any influence which can absurd on the mind. Yeah. And that the love of Christ is stronger than anything that the enemy is trying to do. Lord. The love of Christ is stronger than any trick the enemy can play on your mind. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we must have faith in remembering that the love of God is more powerful than the hate of the devil. Yeah. And that this is the highest yeah. honor that, that can be conferred on any mortal man to be a Christian. Yeah. That our trials in this life are scarily worth regarding in comparison with our future glory. Yeah. With thankfulness, then, should we approach the, the God of mercy. Because of the gospel, we have a blessed and cheering hope. Yes. Which nothing else can produce and which nothing else can destroy. So my brothers and sisters, I'm safe in the hands yeah. of God. Yeah. I'm protected in the hands of God. Yeah. I'm loved in the hands of God. Yeah. I'm cherished in the hands of God. I'm supported in the hands of God. That everything provided in the hands of God. That nothing shall come between us and the love of God. Paul said, I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully convinced. There's nothing you can say to make me change my mind. There's nothing you can say to make me turn around. But I believe that God loves me no matter where I end up. I believe, I believe God loves me no matter where I go. I believe God loves me even when I hate it myself. I believe God loves me when I hate it my soul. I believe God loves me when I was a drug addict. I believe God loves me when I was an alcoholic. I believe God loves me when I was chasing women. I believe God loves me no matter how. Way back. 
There may be one today. There may be somebody today. 